Nigerian Immigration Service has denied reports that the passport issued to David Wamina, who uh, was alleged to have been trafficked to the United Kingdom for organ harvesting by former Deputy Senate President Ike Ekweramadu and his wife Beatrice, was fraudulently procured. Now, the couple were arraigned at the Oxbridge Magistrate Court in London on charges of conspiracy and organ harvest on Thursday. The prosecutor had claimed David, a 15-year-old boy, was unaware that he was in the UK to donate a kidney until he went for a hospital appointment with the Aquarimadus. Pictures of his passport online indicated that David is 21 years old, fueling speculations that the passport may have been illegally uh, procured. However, a statement on Sunday by the Acting Controller General of Immigration, Idris Jerry, claimed that the service followed due process before issuing uh, David his passport. And of course, uh, we should uh, have that on screens for some time uh, this morning on the show. Yeah, let's, you know, part of what that they had said was that they wish to set the record straight by informing uh, the general public that, you know, the passport that was obtained was not obtained fraudulently, that David went through all the processes that needed to have been gone through and was issued the passport. So this just sort of shines the light on the conversation. You know, we, we don't have all the details yet. What we do have is they've been arraigned in court mm. and uh, um, there's, there's a case they, they are answering to. And as, yeah. as, of course, as the story unfolds, we will be it's, it's mostly just the Nigerian Immigration Service having to clear their name and, and re respond to a lot of the social media um, uh, conversations that have been occurring in the last uh, 48 hours. Um, and of course, you, you know how it always turns out when there is a you know, seeming lack of clarity with the story. A lot of people then have to, uh, you know, create their own conspiracy theories and, you know, their own imaginations. People had already started to mention that. Uh, you know, it's very possible to get a fraudulent passport and a fraudulent, uh, you know, um, um, records basically from many government agencies across Nigeria. Now, if we have a look at the screen, that photo we saw is uh, the passport photograph of David. And part of the statement read, uh, part of the statement from the Nigerian Immigration Service read, the service wishes to set the record straight by informing the general public that the views being expressed that the service did not properly vet the breeder documents issued by the applicant during his passport application process are not correct, but mere fabrications aimed at tarnishing the image of the service. The facts of the matter concerning the case above, therefore, are that the said Mr. David Ukwonwamina applied and paid for the enhanced e-passport using the NIS portal, after which he approached the Guagualada Passport Office FCT Abuja on November 2nd, 2021 for his interview. So basically, like we said earlier, you know, this is just them exonerating themselves and saying, we followed due process, he followed due process, you know, it's over to you to... Uh, Continue with your investigations, but we certainly will keep an eye on the story Absolutely. as it develops and we'll bring in more updates here. Yeah. But uh, we do have conversation, a very important conversation. The 25th of June was World Vitiligo Day and uh, we have to have important conversations about vitiligo. Now, if you, in case you're wondering what vitiligo is, it's a long-term condition where pale white patches develop on the skin. It's caused by lack of melanin and can affect any area of skin, but it's common on the face, neck, hands, and legs and in some cases you know it just causes skin creasing vitiligo might not pose a serious threat to health but it can result in physical complications such as eye issues hearing problems and sunburn in nigeria there is of course a record of up to 100 cases per year every 25th of june is a day set aside to build global awareness about vitiligo which occurs in one to two percent of the population worldwide now joining us this morning is Timilola. Omo Bajesu, a vitiligo advocate and also a person living with vitiligo. She'll be joining us to throw more light on this condition. But, you know, it, before we before we have her join us, it's very important that we mention that there are lots of people who have, who live with vitiligo. They're normal people, they have normal lives, but unfortunately, because members of the society are not aware about what it is, they then have to deal with things like stigma and bullying. But there are people who are living with, with vitiligo around the world making so much mark, you know, in, in the modeling space. You know, we have a lot of them that have made their marks. But it's important to mention that it's not always been easy for them. For yeah. some, they've had to deal with bullying and stigmatization. But it's, you know, it's, it's really interesting to find out the journey with I've Timula. Always, I've always seen it as, you know, as God's special tattoo. I, I, I think it's so cute. <laughs> it's so beautiful. All right, we're joined this morning by <laughs> Timula Omobaje. So good morning, Timula. Thank you very much for joining us on the show this morning. Okay, we do not, uh, we, will, we are trying to connect with Timilola, of course, but like Osalga says, 
you know, he said that he, he considers it God's special tattoo. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's the way I've always seen it. You know, everyone's skin is normal, you know, but yours just has this little design here and there. You know, the same thing with freckles. Every now and then people say, oh, I think oh, freckles are so cute. They're so cute. <laughs> Where people complain about having freckles and say, "Oh, you know, my skin is not." How do you? But I'm looking at it, and it's so, it's so, it's, it's like it, it makes you stand out from every other person. You know, this is your own special touch. You know that God gave you, and it, it really cannot be seen as as anything more than you know, less than beautiful. It, Simply it's, with the LIGO to me, in my opinion. Uh, yes. it's, it's, it's honestly the way that I see it. I think it's easier said. You know, when you stand on the outside, it's easier for you to see it. I think it's beautiful. But a lot of the time, people who are who have to you know, live their lives with this reality, then have to deal with the, the snide remarks from people and the many questions. From ignorant people. Yeah, ignorant people. It's the same thing with, um, for example, overcrowded teeth or dimples. They'll tell you that dimples are actually a facial deformity. Mm. But people are like, I like that kind of facial de deformity. Yeah. You know, there's also people who have to live with albinism, especially those who have slightly colored hair, the ones that are sort of, Tilting towards redheads, yeah. I think they are so stunning. And if I could have like red hair, I'd just probably a little, not. Just a little bit.